So Renee Harbor, again, Assistant Superintendent of Facilities and Operations, and welcome to session two of our school bill time study, our technical advisory team, or TAT as we like to call it. Uh, our agenda this evening is we're really, we're gonna have a, a brief overview from TRANSPAR. Mike Archer is going to be speaking with us this evening. And then we have our bell scenarios. We have four, uh, two of which have been revised, two which have been standardized, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into that work. Uh, again, as we did before, we'll continue to look at the, uh, the uh, pros and cons of each. Give me one second, I just heard her. Uh, we do have a, a little bit of engaged feedback based on actually is from that generated from this group last time. I got a couple of questions answered for you. We'll share that and any final thoughts that we have. Uh, we also have a scenario five that's going to be in the survey. It's not in our work today, but you will see it in the survey and I'll kind of give you an understanding of that uh, when we get to that portion of the work. So. We're getting everyone in. A couple more dings. Okay. So just again, we are recording this meeting and I will share the recording with you. And so it also be posted on our Engage page, but I share the recording so you can feel free to share it with your stakeholder groups, um, the communities in which you're representing. Just a reminder to please mute your microphone and use the chat box when you're not speaking. And we do, do not feel shy, raise your hand. We would like to hear all voices in this work. So everyone has a voice tonight. And so we're going to just get started. I think we have a good group now. Welcome everyone who's chimed in. Uh, we're going to start with Mike. And Mike, we have a, a brief overview. And I, I know the first two slides we will probably go through uh, a little more quickly because those are repetitive, but then we'll get started. Okay. Thank you, Renee. Um, just quickly, like you said, the, these first two slides are the same just going through um, the transportation program eligibility you know who the transportation program is designed for um, students residing one mile one and a half mile or with an IEP um, our preferred ride times 30 minutes for neighborhood schools 60 minutes for countywide programs um, and special education routes vary in length based on the student needs and program locations but anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes um, the earliest drop time, 15 minutes prior to instructional bell. And then obviously um, one of the main considerations is the athletics and field trips and conflicts in the afternoon there. Um, again, some of the some of the constraints, um, the middle school and high school, um, a specialty school, six hours and 45 minutes, um, a special ed program. Again, six hours and 42 minutes, and then the Career and Technology Center, um, seven hours and 10 minutes. Um, trying to standardize and reduce the eight, eight bell schedules down to fewer, three if possible. Um, least amount of disruption to current schedules. Maintaining 30 minute ride times for neighborhood schools, 60 minutes max. Avoiding elementary students being picked up in the dark. Peak, uh, just acknowledging peak tra traffic congestion between 7.30 and 8.30. Um, infrastructure congestion on, on driveways, um, at buildings, um, shared bus loops, things like that. Um, and where possible, limiting dependence on cabs and outside contractors to provide transportation. One more slide we added this time is just some more description about the way the routes are set up today. Um, for today's uh, transportation operation, there's 104 regular education routes, 45 special education routes for a total of 149. Um, and just to add, um, because when we're thinking about these scenarios and looking at them from a transportation lens, um, we're thinking about how much time it takes for a bus to complete a certain trip or run um, and then go and do another run for another school and how much time we need in between waves or tiers or groups. Um, and so right now the average elementary trip is about 18 minutes with a range of 10 to 35 minutes. The middle schools average 22 minutes with a range of 13 to 35. High schools are, are the longest group as far as the uh, primary schools are concerned. It's 24 minutes with a range of 10 to 50. 
Um, the Career Center is 31 minutes with a range of 24 to 41. HP Woodlawn, 24 minutes with a range of 16 to 35. And then Shriver um, is the longest of any of them listed here because of it's a special, special education program. Those trips are generally longer. Um, so it's a range of 45 to 65 minutes. Okay, let's pause. I see Jillian's hand. Thank you. Um, those ranges, I, I'm just surprised because I've heard people say that they have uh, bus route, bus uh, rides of longer than what I'm seeing in these ranges. So I want to make sure I understand this correctly. So you're saying there's no elementary school with a bus route that's longer than 35 minutes? There should not be, at least in the plan system. Um, we all know that what is planned doesn't always go to plan, um, depending on the day to day traffic. Um, so there may be some cases where it extends beyond the 35 minute time frame. But as far as what is planned and what the schedules are set to be, um, the longest trip we found within the, the routing system, uh, which stores all of these bus routes and schedules, was 35 minutes on the elementary tier uh, or in the, in the elementary group. Great, and that includes choice, or is that just neighborhood? That's for neighborhood programs. I'm sorry. Ah, okay, that's the difference. So, do you have this for neighbor for choice as well? Um, we we can um, extrapolate that. Yes, um, I can I can get that as a separate standalone data point. Awesome, thanks. Okay, any other questions? All right, great. Okay, so again. The current bell schedule. Um, I won't touch on this too much. It's just it was in the last group of slides as well. Um, just kind of a, a diagram for how all of the the remaining scenarios are are displayed. Okay, so for those who may have chimed in a little bit, we are going to review the scenarios. There are what we've done this time is we've standardized the times a little bit, so made them more even at the 01s and 19s. And you'll see standard, I'm sorry, scenarios one and three. Uh, they look a little bit, we made a couple of adjustments. Uh, I probably believe based on the feedback in, in the last group, scenario one probably has the least adjustments made, so I want to be honest with that. Uh, and then we do have, uh, can we mute our mics, please? Yes. Okay, and then scenarios two and four, you will see some um, revisions, and a lot of that was based on the feedback from this group here. So I will again stop between each of the overviews from Mike and we'll capture your pros and cons. Okay, um, so scenario one. Um, as Renee just explained, it, um, it is the same as last week. Um, the only difference is that the length of the academic day for each school group has been um, set to a five or 10 minute past the hour standard. So, um, so the middle schools uh, on the last week's display of scenario one uh, were six hours and 44 minutes. We rounded that up by one minute to six hours and 45. Um, the elementaries were six hours and 51 minutes. We rounded that down to six hours and 50. And then the high school, six hours and 52. We rounded that up to six hours and 55. So other than that um, change, the school levels and groups are where they were. I believe all the start times are the same. Um, the only thing that changed is the dismissal times to reflect that adjustment in the length of day. And then the other thing, I believe in this one, we had to shift the career center before the high school to allow for the opportunity for those students to transition from their home school to the career center if they were participating in midday and afternoon sessions, PM sessions. So with that, um, I will pause and remember I'm, I'm I'm facilitating and chat watching and hand watching. So are there any comments regarding scenario one at this time?
Jillian. Thank you. So I just have the same comments as last time. Um, you know, this still has middle schools first, um, which seems less than ideal. As far as just the changes to make it more standardized, that does seem like an improvement. Okay, thank you. Heather? Hi, uh, yes, I was just, I was wondering if sort of a, an overview in terms of are any of these scenarios going to address the concept that we were talking about in terms of moving middle school and high school later and putting more elementary school earlier? I know we're looking at each of these scenarios separately, but I, I guess I'm not quite sure if this hasn't really changed much, what feedback you're looking for from this scenario. So we do have scenarios that uh, did capture your feedback from last week. So you will see those uh, primarily in two and four. And uh, this again, we've standardized the time and shifted the career center. So the career center time was off compared to last time. So pretty much uh, I think you did capture the fact and, and wanted to see how you all felt it, uh, about the standardized time and us making that a little more rounded. OK, so just in terms of instead of adding it, ending it like a 5-2, we're adding it like ending at 50. Yes, ma'am. That's what you're looking at for. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's reasonable. It's always seemed kind of strange. The <laughs> the ending time is it bizarre. Thing. Yeah, I did a little research that happened around. I believe they told me the 0405 school year where we had to add some time to the day and somehow we came to four minutes. And those four minutes have stuck since then. It's always nice to do a little Arlington research. <laughs> so that's how we came with the to, to have those uh, varying times. Jillian, is that an old hand or a new hand? Old hand, sorry about that. Not a problem. All right. Okay, we're gonna move on to scenario two. Okay, and scenario two um, is an update from last week, um, and we did attempt to um, incorporate a lot of that feedback. Um, what we did was we increased the size of the first wave of elementary buildings. So now um, starting at 730, there's 20 buildings slated to be um, in that group, along with the career center. Um, we did move middle schools to a later time frame. Um, to, to reflect that feedback. Uh, so that is really the primary change. Um, the middle group, um, other than the career center moving, um, stays the same. Five elementary buildings, the high schools, and uh, new directions. Okay, so in, in reviewing scenario two, again, we have shifted elementary to the first group, 20 schools in that group starting at 7.30. The career center will also start at 7.30. We have our middle group with the high schools, our second elementary group, and that was based on feedback uh, from the other stakeholder group and trying to get the elementary schools a little closer together for professional learning opportunities as well as new directions. And then our final group with middle schools, Shriver and HB Woodlawn. And let me start. I see Anne's hand. Yes, uh, just that. I mean, currently no neighborhood schools start at 730 that I know of, so it's moving everything earlier and 730 sounds really early for a start time. OK. Heather. Hi, yes, I, I do agree that 730 is awfully early. Um, I was wondering if this scenario um, need, means we need to invest in more buses because I know we were saying that elementary school um, together is, is very bus heavy. So I, I was interested in what additional resources would be necessary to make this scenario happen. So Heather, I'll be sharing a slide a little bit later that shows the number of buses that we use for each of our schools. And so what we'll be trying to do is look at the locale as well as the number of buses that are required so that we can bring that together and not require additional buses because that would be um, a, something we weren't charged to do is to add a, more cost to right. the <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's what we'll be looking at okay. and i'll share it. yeah great thank rohini? you mm -hmm. rohini uh yes i 
Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we so can. I would, I would agree. I think if the motivation here was to push our earliest groups in middle school later, 730, even if it is elementary, is for at least for our community, in my personal opinion, is moving in the absolute wrong direction. That means if most buses come, as you said, 18 to 30 minutes before, you have these little kids out there at 7 a.m. Um, while they're going to be supervised. My concern is obviously icy sidewalks, people walking in the dark, children, you know, crossing streets, even if they are with parents. That just doesn't seem right. And there's also, it appears to be sort of a huge um gap between the first elementary school group at 7 30 a.m and then the next one isn't until 8 20 so I'm, I'm not sure this is this is the best option okay thank you thank you melania i actually kind of like this to be honest i understand the constraints right like thinking about the constraints that the system has like somebody's gonna have to go much earlier and this really takes into consideration that we want our elementary school kids to go earlier, get out of school earlier, so they that have the afternoon, and then our older kids to go to school later. Um, and this hits it. Yes, I completely agree, 7.30, oh my gosh, sounds so early. But um, if that is, right, if there's any, if there's any play in how much time you need between tier one and tier two, and we can make tier one a little bit later, that would be amazing. But, you know, we do have to consider. So I actually like this scenario a lot better in the way that it's tiered with the elementary schools in tier one and tier two, and then the older kids um, later. Okay. Thank you. And in the chat, uh, uh, Jillian says, if we have to have one set of schools start at 7.30, I think the neighborhood elementary schools are the right choice because those have the shortest bus rides and she's in agreement with Melania. Okay, Anne. Oh, um, and if you're speaking, you, you're muted yourself. Sorry. That's Hi. okay. There we go. Sorry, I was, tur I was turning off my uh, camera. Um, uh, the, at our bus, at our school, um, the buses are dropped off, the kids are dropped off 10 to 15 minutes before school starts. Like our school starts at nine and the doors open at 8.45. Mm -hmm. um, kids are often on the buses waiting. Mm -hmm. So um, it would mean if you have a 35 minute bus route, they're being picked up at 6.45, mm -hmm. um, which to me is just not feasible. Um, and I don't know if teachers have been consulted. I mean, that's obviously an important link in this is if we have a lot of elementary teachers that don't live in Arlington or have young children, like do their daycares open at 5.45 a.m., which is when they would have to drop off, or at you know 6 a.m., which is when they'd have to drop them off to get in to have their classrooms ready, that they have to be in their rooms at 7.15 at the latest, really, they're mostly of them are there a half hour ahead of time. So do our teachers, which I think would be the most important question, can we staff 20 elementary schools at 7 a.m.? Okay. Um, and then as far as the high school start time, I mean, if the high school is ending at 410, I don't see how that works with extracurriculars because currently high school practices start at 330 and they some don't end till 930, even with the current. So that just because of field and gym shortages, using all of our gyms and fields in full capacity starting at 330, we still go until 930. So we would either need more gyms or more fields or the end school earlier. So, and, and let me make sure I understand because high school ends at 315. Currently? Yeah, so this scenario, high school would go from 820 to 315. Oh. Currently Sorry, is eight. Maybe this That's is okay. the wrong slide. It's uh, my slide that is uh, showing, it says 925 to 410. Is that? Or that's middle and high school specialty schools, or is that the wrong slide? Um, I, I, I hope I'm projecting revised scenario two. Is that what you all are seeing it, seeing at this time? Yes, that's what I see. Yeah. Okay. okay I see I'm it sorry. Too. Maybe my uh, internet is glitching, um, so oh. maybe I just didn't load. No okay. Problem. Then, sorry, I had the wrong slide in front of me. No, but, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. Thank you. Uh huh. Dana. 
Okay, uh, two quick things. I would like to suggest that, well, first of all, I agree completely with everyone who's saying 7.30 is too early. Um, I, I'd like to suggest seeing whether we have a better understanding of how broadly you have to spread out the start times, because obviously everybody would like something between eight and nine or eight and 9.30. Um, so I'm just wondering how, how much spread does there need to be? And I'd also like to, to, to bring back in the idea of the zero period for uh, teams, et cetera, as one of the options for practices. Okay. In other words, it, maybe it doesn't all have to be after school. Maybe some of it can be before school. Okay. And that way people can choose to have to be somewhere early rather than everybody having to be somewhere early. Um, Mike or, or Drew, did you want to address just the spread? What is a good or probably the most efficient spread of time? Yeah, and that, that was one of the reasons we included that slide with average times, um, because really you're building from that. Um, and so the average sits somewhere around 20 minutes, I want to say, across all the school levels. So yeah. I'm sorry, I was trying to go back. Let me see if I can get back to that slide without it. Glitching. I didn't understand that, I'm sorry. May I ask, by the spread, you mean what we would construe as our route time between the tiers, correct? That's how I'm interpreting it. Is that your question, Dana, that the, the route time, the times between the tiers? Uh, I guess I was thinking of it even more simply as just what what does the full range have to be? Um, does somebody have to start at 730 in order for 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 someone to start at 920? Maybe that's the wrong way to look at it, it because I know there has to be spread in there, too, but I didn't really understand the 20 minutes between things. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just dense about this. No. That's Man, if I, if if I'm following you correctly, uh, when we drop, when the buses drop off, uh, we need, to, is it that spread you're looking at, that spread of time to go to the next tier? Uh, 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 here, where I live in Chesterfield County, the buses will drop off at about 7.05 because the first bell is going to be at ex exactly 7.10. So when the last kid gets off the bus, that bus goes back out for about anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes, we're routing. We're picking up the next, we're picking up the next tier, which here where I live in Chesterfield County, it's about 30 minutes in between. When we finish that, we drop those kids off and we have a spread in time, like 25, 30 minutes uh, to start the last tier. Does that help, Dana? Sort of. I'm just yeah. gonna keep following along, thank you. Okay, and, and we'll come back to it. So as we go through the tiers, if it's still not clear, please do ask and we'll we'll try to explain. And then I have Susana. Hi, um, really quick uh, about the, I agree that 7.30 is too early for elementary. And I just wanted to point out, I think it was a, a good point saying that um, kids going to elementary school are very often supervised by a parent. However, I believe Arlington guidance allows kids starting at grade two, right, which is like what, eight years old, can walk to school and walk to the bus stop on their own. And I know at least in my neighborhood, the kids who are walking to school, they're pretty little. And so I, I think we should still keep in mind that elementary school kids shouldn't be walking in the dark because there are a good amount that are walking alone without a grown up. The other thing is I'm looking at the middle school. I like that middle school start time is later. Um, I was hoping to see it in the second tier, not the third tier, because if middle school ends at 355, I don't think there is time for after school sports and activities. Um, my kid goes to TJ and not only is there sports, but there's a whole robust uh, activity schedule and, and it's really good for the kids. Um, especially I think lower income kids who can't, you know, who take advantage of the school activities rather than, you know, the expensive like Taekwondo or something like that. 
anyway, um, so ending at 355, um, I don't think allows time for those activities right now. Uh, usually like, for example, the soccer team would their their games would start at like 315, I think, and end around four. So right. um, I hope we can still allow for middle school activities. Right. And uh, the the trade off with the high school is the alignment with our uh, neighboring jurisdictions with regards to uh, the VH SL sports schedule. So that's in all the scenarios, fully transparent. Middle, I mean, high school is going to fall in the middle of all of those because we are trying to kind of stay in alignment with our neighboring jurisdictions. But I did capture your um, concerns there. And then in our chat, um, um, I think it's a small compromise to have the first elementary school start at 750, like the current middle school, but I like elementary school group two start time as is. And um, I think no one should have to walk to school in the dark and disagree with regards to activities. Other schools do it in order to get enough sleep for their kids. So thank you. Let me make sure I got everyone's hands. Now I'm still seeing Melania, Dana, and Susanna's hands. Are those old hands? Okay, great. Yeah, we're old, sorry. All right, no problem. Susan, okay, good. Okay, so let's move to scenario three. Scenario three, um, again, we were trying to balance the the um, feedback from both of the groups. Let's see if I can get it to, there we go, show. Uh, so go ahead, Mike. All right, so just real quick, um, scenario three is still the same as last week. All that was changed <clears throat> was the um, the standardized academic day. Um, so I guess we can go right into feedback. Okay. I was capturing Rohini's uh, uh, chat point about scenario two in the second grader, so I'm capturing that. Give me one second. All right. Okay, so scenario three, and we have uh, middle school starting at 740, elementary school group is still at 730. So I will copy and paste, capture those uh, concerns with the last scenario, because that is an early start time. And uh, New Directions, Career Center High School are in that second group along with elementary school group two. And across all four scenarios, we uh, did not alter uh, Shriver and H.B. Woodlawn as far as uh, the where they fell in the groupings. It's just that we standardized their time and adding that additional time to the schedule. Any feedback that isn't, um, that's something a little different than scenario two. I, I am going to copy and paste the issues of, of the earlier start time for elementary school. And nothing that shifts middle school earlier should be considered. So again, we're trying to balance between the two groups because we're definitely getting uh, competing feedback from uh, stakeholder groups, but we're, we're trying. So you'll see again, scenarios with middle school coming later. We have another one coming up in a moment. I, um, I also have the same concerns with scenario three that I have last week, so I will capture those. And for middle school, we do need to support a late bus at 515 for after school activities. Melania, could you? That was for scen the scenario two. Oh, OK, OK, gotcha, gotcha. OK, thank you. Let's see, Kia. Hi, I don't know. Maybe you already have taken this into consideration. It just occurred to me that mm -hmm. we cannot start at the same time as the career center because there's no way we can handle the traffic at the same time. For um, Montessori. I'm sorry. For, for Montessori. Montessori. Yeah. yeah for Montessori. We have that. So they wouldn't be in the same group that the career center. Yes. Okay. So that's it's not just Montessori. We also have Discovery, uh, a fleet. Uh, Gosh, there's one more that's escaping my my mind right now uh, where they're sharing. Oh, Carlin Springs, where they're sh sharing campuses with a secondary school. So we would need to be mindful of how we group the schools. Okay. Yes, Kia. Great. Thank you. No problem. And. Um, yes, and I think maybe Dana or someone was getting to this earlier of why. Sorry, why. 
um, in scenario two and three, do we have schools that start at 730 at all? Is that a bus necessity or, um, you know, right now the spread is bigger than our current spread of school start times. Yes, yeah, so you're going to see a, a scenario where it doesn't start at 730, but the earlier or the later you start, the later we go. So we're going to show you the next scenario. So we're trying to balance either end, uh, but to start at 730, then that allows us to get out a little later for that last tier. Um, but you'll will, but that is the, the basic reason. I learned that myself. Right. So, so is that saying that our, our current time spread we couldn't maintain? Like if we did nothing for next year, middle, you know, because right now right, mid, most middle schools start at 750 and mm -hmm. the latest elementary school starts at nine. So mm -hmm. we that's you know, that's total an hour and 10 minute spread. And now mm -hmm. we have an, uh, an hour and 50 minute spread. So mm -hmm. do we have to have an hour and 50 minute spread in order to make our current buses work? No, honestly, we don't okay. have to have an hour 50 minute spread. It's just, again, when we are, and, and that's the question I actually asked and Mike got my question a little earlier. What happens if we do nothing? <laughs> and, um, but we are gonna still see the, the struggles that we're seeing with regards to um, ensuring that we have the, the routes to run the uh, activities, the so the middle school sports to get them to their their uh, neighbor the schools that they are participating, as well as ensuring that we have the buses in place for the um, high school activity. So again, we could take what we have after we do this. That's that's the the beauty of the exercise. Do the exercise see what we can change? I think one thing that's coming out of it. I'm hearing from both groups is that we're standardizing the time so we can work to do that, um, but also to see how we can um, best meet the needs with the fleet that we have, right? So that's a, that's a fair question to ask. So I did capture that. Don't have a full answer, but I did capture the question. Um, and Melania, the school day is longer with this, the current spread. There are schools that are done and there might be one or two buses that are ready and the rest are always late. OK. And that's your feedback for scenario three. OK, let me see. Melania, that was your Melania. Did you have a hand too or did I? Count? Sorry, that was that was just a comment on, on why the spread has to be bigger because the okay. current spread is not working. Right. right. The spread has to be bigger because we, we you told us you're adding 10 minutes to the school day. So mm -hmm. right there, it's got to be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And then with the current spread, at least in my particular, one of my schools, mm -hmm. the school bell rings at the end of the day and there might be one or two buses. When I picked up my son today, there were no buses. Okay. They're always late. So the current spread is not working. Okay. And uh, and how many buses typically are there? Uh, there should be, I think, eight or nine buses because it's okay. an option school. Okay. If not more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Dana? Sorry okay. about that. Okay. I was asking about, th this is why I was asking about the spread earlier. Did it, did someone really have to have the pain of 7.30 start? I was trying to figure out whether we could avoid that entirely, and I'm still mm -hmm. hoping that we can. Um, but that's why I was asking what the spread needed to be. Okay. All right, and Kia, I captured your comment in the chat. If elementary schools start at 730, schools will probably need to expand extended day uh, capacity for those schools because the 250 end time may be inconvenient for working families. That's an excellent point. And we actually had extended day staff on our call Friday. So you all um, are actually on the same wavelength with regards to that, Kia, but thank you. Okay. And Milani, I think that's your old hand. Yes, it is. Okay. And Jillian, uh, we did talk about that on the flip side. If it starts at 730, will we need morning extended day? We talked about that as well, as well as would extended day have to start a little earlier because, you know, um, families are trying to get their students 
uh, to certain locations. So yes, we did capture both of those, both sides of that conversation. Okay. And then scenario four. Okay, so scenario four, um, similar to the scenario two, um, we took some feedback and um, made it so that there was a large group of elementary schools. Um, and this starting first, this in this scenario at 750. Um, however, that means the middle schools, we kind of flipped them around. And so the middle schools are now sitting at 920 to 405, um, along with Shriver and HP Woodlawn in that third group. Um, the first group elementaries and then the middle group uh, still has new directions, career center, high school, and then um, a second group of elementaries. Um, similar to scenario two, um, in this revision, we put 20 buildings, uh, 20 elementary buildings in the first group and five elementary buildings in that middle group. Okay. All right, let me get to my pros and cons. I'll give you a minute to digest. Revise scenario four. Okay, Dana. If it had to be one of these four, I would definitely choose this one. It doesn't start anyone at 730. Um, it starts middle school and, and high school a bit a bit later than than now. Um, and those are the, those are, are two of the three goals I would have for this process. So I like this best. I would tweak it a little here and there, meaning I'd consider can high schools go later and middle schools in the middle? But if we had to pick today, this one. Okay, thank you. And uh, Jackie, she agrees with your comments as well as Jillian, this is my preference. Okay, Susanna. Hi, I just um, just have the same concern. I'm just curious if a middle school were to get out at 405, mm -hmm. are, is it still feasible to have the after school sports and the after school activities for middle schoolers? I know at the beginning of this school year, it, they had it in the budget for Arlington Public Schools to cut middle school uh, extracurriculars mm -hmm. and everybody uh, there was quite an outcry and thankfully we we got to retain them so I'm just wondering maybe like I'm just wondering does this mean we can't have middle school activities or can they be had later is I just so, I have no idea. Deb DeFranco was in our group on Friday she did not uh, indicate that we could not have sports but we do need to consider the fact that uh, with the 405 dismissal Understanding middle school, you may start at 4.30 uh, for the sports schedule. So in, in middle school uh, competitions tend to not run too long, but we have to consider where middle school tennis and soccer primarily fall. So those are con uh, concerns that I know came out and just me coming from my middle school mind. Uh, those are concerns that we do have. But no, there is no indicator that we would not have middle school sports at all. Yeah, no, to your point really quick, like I know we look like in the fall, soccer is outside. I know Williamsburg, for example, doesn't have lights. Would it be dark? Stuff like that. I don't know. Um, but again, too, and it's not just sports. Like I said, I know there's a lot of other, a lot of clubs and activities that um, I just, you know, would hate to see for kids to not be able to take advantage of those, especially lower income kids who can't afford the, you know, things outside of school. Yes, that's a fair summation. Thank you. Kenny. Hi, um, I'm just chiming in to say that this this um, option does look like a good one. Um, and I'm, I'm um, just echoing something Jillian said earlier that um, leaving five elementary schools at a later start date would allow you to fit some of the longer bus rides for option schools into those five for a, a, um, a later start, which might might be convenient for those schools. So this looks good. Um, 750 is better than 730. Too bad it couldn't be eight but um, there are limitations as someone else said, so um, this looks pretty good to me. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Yes, just to answer Susanna's question about middle school sports, my assumption is due to field shortages, middle school sports wouldn't be allowed because ASA starts using the fields at 445. <laughs> so it's not just darkness. Um, rec sports and club sports start on almost in almost all gyms and sports. Uh, so they there wouldn't be room for middle school to have fields. So that is a conversation and and now my other part of my work is that I do communicate and collaborate with the county side and also Parks and Rec and they are aware that we are going through this study so that that would be some conversation and consideration so won't won't rule it out just yet they are they are though um, very engaged and and curious as to see where we land as a, a district with this. Uh, Rohini. Uh, yes. Uh, so pardon my naivete. I mean, I do have a middle schooler and a high schooler and an elementary schooler, but I, maybe I just missed it. Could you just take a second to please explain what is the impact or the considerations we're facing as we want to um, optimize moving middle schoolers' schedules later, which me, my middle school communities are fully in support of mm -hmm. um, and hoping we'll do. But what, what is the impact? Because as uh, I guess if you could just walk us through that, is it busing? Is it a sports bus? Is it um, someone mentioned soccer, for example, the fields could be dark if there's no light. Um, I know Ham and Williamsburg don't have it. Like what, what, how are we grappling with this? So uh, this scenario definitely came out of feedback from this group specifically last week with regards to middle school start time being a little later. Uh, with that, of course, and understanding where high schools are already falling. I'm sorry, let me turn my camera. I, talk, I forget to turn my camera on. Uh, where high schools fall, and, and again, when we, you know, I, I share with you the scenarios of the comparisons of the different school jurisdictions. So high schools, we were mindful of the fact if we did a, a huge shift, it may impact their ability to get to those competitions and those uh, games outside of Arlington if they're playing Fairfax schools uh, primarily. Uh, so we, you know, we talked about in our first session, if someone is going early and then someone needs to go late. Uh, so we are, we are trying to capture all of that as well as be realistic with the, the time that it would, that we needed to route between the two groups or the three groups. Because we, what we didn't want to do is give you false sense of, of security and then come back and say, yeah, that's not going to work and you're still going to arrive at school and only two of the eight buses are there. You know, so we want to be understanding of that. But I, I, in doing this work, we know if we have somebody at 750, someone is going to have to be on that latter side, given the fact that we also added 10 minutes to the instructional day. Uh, that being said, if we're looking at middle schools going later, and I know, um, and I forgot who just made the, the, was it Dana maybe with the zero period? And I don't think we'll be having middle school sports early in the morning, but uh, with regards to practices and things of that nature, that may be an option as uh, she was suggesting, or some, if that wasn't Dana, I apologize who offered that suggestion. Um, but if if middle school is getting out at 405 and again, I'm, I'm being um, aggressive in that we could start at 430. I know typically right now we um, and I still speak in middle school. We uh, d dismiss at 224 and generally like our games will start at three o'clock. Right. That gives enough time for the officials to get there. Uh, and get set up um, depending on what the uh, sport is, if we have to get wrestling mats and things of that nature assembled. Uh, so we are able to get all of that in place. So I, I speaking from that, I, I would say that is the major uh, constraint between us pushing middle school later uh, in this in the scenarios. And I, I, I will say that I, I'm getting both sides. There's some internal stakeholders that like I like it and but there are some I don't like it so did I, I hope that answered your question well so yes it's helpful I guess what I'm trying to understand if I if I think of my elementary schooler um, we end at 340 right now and right. there's a plethora of after school 
um, enrichments and club opportunities that run from say 345 to 445 or four to five. So I guess I'm just curious. Well, I understand some of the middle school clubs and sports of which my, one of my daughters is a part of in middle school start at three, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. doesn't have to. If the goal is to push middle school later for all the reasons we've cited, could we not push the sports a little later as well? We could. We could push the sports a little bit later. Again, that would be a, a, a huge shift for our community. That would be an adjustment, not to say the adjustment can't be made. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to clarify that because where middle school is ending, that does not totally um, negate any after school activities. We could still have activities in, in clubs as well as sports. Yes. Um, let me get back. Uh, let's see, Anne? Yeah, I mean, just the, the difference between the middle school sports and elementary after school activities, the elementary school activities are at the school, whereas middle school sports are in between the schools, so you need to be bused. And usually they start 45 minutes you know, to an hour after school starts, after school ends. So it would mean that you'd be having wrestling matches that start at the earliest 5.30 um, from like how they run currently. Right. Currently, the wrestling matches start at, I guess, no, they start at like 4, 5, 15. Currently, the wrestling matches start at 3.30. Right. Um, and also, I mean, it, it would just then assume that the middle school gyms wouldn't already be in the in the winter. Yorktown basketball uses Williamsburg gym for practices. They don't have enough gym space at their school. So if you had middle schoolers couldn't be using the gyms if you needed them for high school practice. I mean, Arlington has a huge shortage of gym and field. So you're saying wrestling matches right now, because I transitioned before wrestling season. They're now starting at yeah. 30 now. Yeah. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, I'll go check this. I'll go check the schedule. But yeah, um, they say 315 on the schedule, mm -hmm. but they almost never started. At, the only one that started at 315 was Williamsburg versus Ham because they're so close. Right. But, um, my son at any of the other ones were, were from Williamsburg that you had to go to Kenmore or Swanson. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't start till 3.30. Um, okay. Anyway, That's and I know my son plays basketball for Yorktown and at least once a week they had practice at Williamsburg because Yorktown doesn't have enough gym space for the dance team, cheerleaders and basketball team. So oh. if you, you can't have a wrestling meet, start at 5.30 and have the Yorktown dance team in the gym. Okay. Yeah, I ooh, I'm talking out of turn. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I I, I ha I'm just knowing that middle school sports and clubs and activities was on the chopping block already um, mm -hmm. for this school year. I'm just I'm I'm concerned that maybe when people are seeing this in APS, they're they. They're gonna chop. They're gonna, you know, chop that off again because she's making great points about about you know the shortage of fields and that kind of thing. I wasn't even thinking about that. How like Arlington soccer starts mm -hmm. using like Williamsburg fields and stuff like that. So I have a feeling, and it would be really a bummer that that middle school sports and activities and things like modeling UN and all that good stuff would 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 go away. I think it's impossible. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Old hand. Sorry, had to unmute. Sorry about that. Oh. Um, so it, it. First of all, I think. We I know we live in the real world, but on the other hand, it shouldn't be the case that our kids can't get enough sleep and have their activities. And it feels a little like, you know, like the tail wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. if the activities if we aren't able to make the activities work so it feels to me like we should sort of insist that they should we we this it's important for people who are part of our community to make it work so you know field space for instance um our kids should have access to that and then then that's in response to to what several people were saying what i wanted to say originally was first do we have to add 
to, to the APS day. I'm really wondering how necessary that is. And I already put this in my in my comments, but my little guy is practically vibrating with the need to move and get out of school, my elementary school kid. And I, I really wonder how necessary that is. Mm -hmm. And and I, I want to push back a little on it because we we do OK already as we are. Do we really need more time? OK, so if we we compare to our neighboring jurisdictions, we are second to last to Alexandria with regards to the amount of instructional time that we've been using. But the other key piece is the need for increased intervention time and uh, that opportunity for extension as well. I, just having been in the schools recently, teachers are struggling to find that time and not pull from the instructional time that we already have. So that and then coupled with looking more, this is more of a, a secondary middle schoolers who are taking high school credit courses and our high schoolers ensuring that we have the amount of seat time that we've covered. Whenever we run into a situation uh, this year, we were close with the, the uh, snow days. And once we say that we're going to have snow days, uh, that does decrease from the amount of in total instructional seat time that we are required to have to be fully accredited. So those are uh, concerns. And again, I don't know if you were on, uh, we came across this at 0405 and that's how we came up with those odd numbers because we added four minutes to the day. That was one of those years where we had a lot of closure for weather and we were running the risk of not being able to meet our seat time as, um, as um, identified by the state that we needed to meet to ensure that we're fully accredited. Uh, so that is that is also ensuring that. So it's it's two two prong to ensure that we are making um, certain that we are meeting the state requirement, but also allowing that instructional time to meet those additional needs that we know have become even more apparent with our students after we at coming out of the pandemic. So two quick responses to that. Mm -hmm. uh, one, okay, it sounds like we've already added. Um, to, no. You said in, in 04, 05 we already added? We added four minutes back then that just have never disappeared. <laughs> so that, okay. that, equipped, that still keeps us a second to the bottom with regards to instructional time. And then second, if it's the high schoolers who need a longer day, mm -hmm. can they be the ones who have the longer day? <laughs> You know, I just I, I'm thinking there's there's just the law of diminishing returns with little kids mm -hmm. um, having it anyway. OK, just planting that thought. And then second, um, what are the chances of bus passes for all high school students to ease all of this for us? So, you know, we are in a pilot program right yeah. now. The county yeah, I wondered how that was doing is doing phenomenally well, actually. So um, right now we're only piloting with six schools, so they're really working that through, but that is uh, something that we will continue to encourage. But for those who don't know, we, we actually have a uh, pilot, um, Oh goodness, I just forgot the, the name for it. But the, the art bus. Thank you, yes, thank student, you, Jillian. Bearless pilot. I'll put That's the link Jillian. in the chat. <laughs> so we um we are actually providing bus passes uh, for art bus rides for our students at um, WNL Career Center Kenmore. And Jillian, you can help me. I'm trying to think of the other three schools. HB Woodlawn. Uh, so to encourage the use of public transportation, but also to understand the cost that's incurred by that. Thank you. Jillian has put the link in the chat, so I'm not making up anything, please. Gunston and Wakefield, thank you. So um, yes, that is a pilot that we are uh, continuing to pursue. It, it, we're really um, excited about the, the um the demand is it, it's, it's actually a, a good thing. So thank you, Dana, for bringing that to our attention. And we have Anne and then Jillian. Um, I was just going to speak to Dana's question about extending the school day. And from my understanding from Durian's presentation, part of that is because we have more holidays now in the schedule. So we actually go to school fewer days total. So in order to accommodate the new world holidays that were introduced to the schedule last year, um, we need to add time to the school day. So the alternative is of a shorter day is going to school 
four days. So Arlington will now go to school the fewest number of days uh, that it has on its calendar that it has. Um, uh, so that is why time was added to the day. Thank um, you, I appreciate it. <laughs> and then uh, to speak, I mean, uh, just a quick story for middle school sports. I know someone else was speaking of it is, um, my son does wrestle and he does club wrestling because our neighbor's the coach and can drive him. But, um, he had a friend that showed up to cheer for them and they needed someone in their weight class and he then joined the wrestling team that day. And he just won the middle school for his weight class after never having wrestled before. Um, so it just middle school sports and, and my experience with sports, not Model UN, but I'm sure that goes for all other activities it's just so accessible that it's not as much at the high school level you know um the, many kids can make a middle school sports team and can participate in it for the first time without having had real coaching before which isn't the way our high schools run because they're so large now so um i don't mean to you know keep beating the drum but it's a large part of my middle schoolers middle school experience and how he made friends and came back from COVID and as everyone said, when middle school sports were and activities were gonna get cut um, and they can't be a zero period unless you wanna bus the kids there. Like, so if you wanna have a zero period, so it just means you need to have early buses rather than late buses. So a, a, a zero period of middle school sports wouldn't solve that. Um, but we've seen lots of kids that have never done, you know, a play before or they do the, the I don't know what it's called, Williamsburg, Heather would know, the um, act two. Okay. Um, yeah. And those are all feasible. Those are all feasible because yes, the kids are already there and bus there. Yeah, right. you can't have Act Two zero period unless you want to bus the kids to Act Two. That's true. Thank you, Anne. All good points. And Jillian. Thank you. Um, so I think a lot of people are making really great points. Um, the the issue that I see is that you know we in order to meet everything everyone is asking for all the schools need to start at 8 30 which of course isn't possible we're we're in a situation of having limited resources and um and we need to have a prioritization unfortunately of how to serve our, our limited resources so i i completely agree that high schools high schools need to be able to participate in their sports leagues completely agree that we should enable middle school activities uh i agree that you know, a lot of these things, 100% agree that these are good things, but I think it kind of boils down to what's the priority. We can't have everything. So what is it that we're choosing? And to, to answer that question, I would say, you know, I, I think it's a given that we have to work within our resources and we have to accept that we're not going to have more buses. Number one. Number two, I think instructional need should be the next highest priority and instructional need says we start elementary school students first. Sorry, uh, I've got elementary school students too, so I probably be in that or might be in that that category. And then after that, I think there's some tweaking depending on what's feasible and I'm, I'm not sure we have the information of what's feasible here right now, but I think you've gotten a lot of good questions. Um, and then to Dana's point about the APS pilot, it's actually run by the county um, and it's wonderful. We're very excited that the county took this on. They're using their, their um, American Rescue, Act, Rescue Plan Act money to do it, but they could be doing a much better job. And it's right now it's a limited pilot. As Renee said, it's only six schools. It's actually only 24 individually identified students within those six schools so it's not even like whatever 2400 students in those schools want it it's you had to meet some criteria long story but what we actually need is we need the art schedules to work with the bell time schedules um so that we can actually be serving you know be getting more kids on the buses which is a really huge project. It's not something it's not something feasible by this fall and it's probably not some, something feasible by next fall, but it's something that if we want it to happen has to be in the county's budget soon. So personally, I think this bell time study is very important and we should go ahead and implement it. And then I separately spend my time advocating 
for the county to do more to let art birth buses serve the schools in you know a much much bigger project which realistically can take effect in fall of 2024 um and that might let us tweak the bell times and that's unfortunate for the kids who you know for the few years in between but i in, from what i know my understanding of everything i think that's just the reality we're in we can't have everything we want and i think instruction should be our first priority which means elementary school first thank you okay i want to make sure these are old hands from dana and and jillian just spoke okay all right so the uh, survey will be coming out this evening and i'm not watching my email but that will be coming out there is going to be a scenario five and it was again our goal to try to mesh all the needs that we've heard in the uh, the com conversations that we've had between the two stakeholder groups. Um, Mike, I, I don't have that in this slide. Can you just speak to it briefly? Sure, I am trying to find it. So, mm -hmm. so yes, so the scenario five, um, it will have a group of elementaries that does not have a number of buildings attached to it, um, starting at 750, along with the middle schools at 750. Um, so that seems to be checking a lot of the boxes uh, for feedback from tonight. Um, the high schools are still in the middle, I believe at 840, um, with the Career Center and, and New Directions kind of offset from that schedule. Um, and then the, the only, main change um, to in order to get the middle schools to be on that early uh, tier was that the second group of elementary buildings, which again does not have a number yet determined uh, for it, is um, in the later. So really we're having an early group of elementaries and a later group of elementaries that are far more apart, far further apart than they are in any of the other scenarios, which I know, um, you know, from feedback we tried to get the groups of elementaries to be close to one another and the scheduling um, impacts that that has and that improves um, collaboration across the buildings. Um, so I don't want to speak to any of the downsides, but we, we do realize that the separation of elementary buildings is substantial in this particular scenario. But again, we're trying to use the buses and the resources we have. Um, and all buildings Everybody's starting after 750s is the earliest time if anybody's starting. So I do apologize that we don't have scenario five um, because that was something that came up again last minute, but we did get it into the survey. So you will see scenario five in the survey. Um, understanding that, we I wanted to just share with you right now where our elementary schools are grouped. And uh, we did this uh, activity, this exercise with our stakeholder groups on Friday and looking at where they're grouped right now, who has the eight o'clock start, the 825 start and the nine o'clock start. Uh, I'm understanding also that uh, integration station only utilizes our special education transportation. So it's not in that uh, general bus count. And Randolph is our total walk zone school. So only uses special education transportation. So it's not in that walk. Uh, I'm sorry, not in the general ed bus count. So it's not in that, that count there. But when we think about that, and look at the number of buses that we're currently using for the elementary schools. Um, understanding that our middle and high schools uh, will mid anchor and then anchor. So we need um, our, our elementary schools have the, the, the fewest number of buses unless it's an option school. Those tend to be our larger bus counts. Then our middle schools take the next larger chunk of buses. And then of course our high schools uh, average out at 27, 24, 21 as far as buses. So when we look at that, uh, you can kind of see here the, the number of buses that we do need to run a particular group tier. 
And I shared, and, I, and I'm going to ask somebody and anyone who wants to try, I shared uh, this uh, quick survey just to kind of get a feel for our stakeholders on Friday, where they would see us grouping those elementary schools. Because again, we you'll see that middle and high schools are already grouped together. Elementary schools, we have a group one and group two. And was just trying to get a feel uh, for where you would see that falling. Um, I hope I made it so you can access it outside of Arlington. It's it's a it's a um, link I have to click over. So if someone can just put in the chat if they're able to access that link, that will be helpful. Let me know if I uh, operated technology correctly. Ah, yay! Thank you, Julie. <laughs> okay, so it can be accessed outside of Arlington. So uh, this is something. Oh, come on, Jackie. <laughs> So we'll work on uh, making. Sorry, that's okay. I will go back again and try to see if we can set it so uh, we can get all of your responses. Because I, when we restricted, um, yeah. So the Gmail account might be a difference. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to work on that. So I'll work on it and send you all the link out in our. Um, through our email correspondence because I'm interested in your feedback as well as far as how we group it. It is just again, we're gathering feedback, uh, not to say that those can be the groups because we do have to look at again the number of buses. We have to look at uh, the location of the, the schools and uh, in reference and uh, to the other school locations and getting those buses rerouted to their next pickups. So we want to make sure and and it sounds like the gmail account works so that's a awesome tip thank you teamwork makes the dream work thank you all so uh, but i'll still work with our technology guru here in this office to see if i can get it for other uh, email accounts so that's that's i just wanted to give you that information there okay so those are the scenarios um Here are the considerations, and that's for mostly for the, the again, the elementary start times. That link on, on the, the page there is the same link I shared in the chat. I'm, I'm sorry, I may have missed it. Did you want us to fill out that survey? You don't have to fill it out right now. You can fill it out this week. At some point. Yeah, it's not. I, I just have, so from my perspective, I, I think, uh, and maybe there's a place to say this, but from my perspective, I think it's important to have um, Key and Claremont group together. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'm sort of agnostic, except for what is most efficient. Um, and I, I don't know whether it's more efficient to do like one segment of the county at the same time, or if it's actually more efficient to not, you know, to have, if you have five schools in one group, to have them from different parts of the county yeah. so the buses aren't I mean they shouldn't be close to each other anyway for neighborhood schools I, I just don't it's sort of a like huh I don't know what's more efficient routing wise and maybe the answer is there is no you know there is no answer to that um but just just so you know uh, I, I don't know if there's a way to put that comp that feedback in but okay. Key and Claremont need to start at the same time Okay. Oh, scenarios at the time. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading Dana's chat as it, that one, Dana. Right now, middle or did you need? Help? Yes, thank you. That one. No problem. Thank you. I'm going to send this out to you, but I know if you're trying to capture it right now. I'll send you the entire presentation. And I got that, uh, got your feedback, Jillian. Thank you. So, Mike, thank you again. We're going to move into our um, engage feedback. There were a couple of questions that actually came out of this group that we did find answers to. Uh, the first one was the percentage of middle school students participating in after school sports. Unfortunately, the last time we had all of our students back participating is, uh, oh, give me one more second. <laughs> um, there you are, Dana. Got it? <laughs> okay. 
Uh, the last time we had comprehensive data was from our 1920 school year. That was prior to the uh, pandemic. So you can see there, <coughs> excuse me, the percentage of students that were participating at um, the uh, five comprehensive middle schools at that time because Dorothy Ham opened in the next school year. And then <coughs> how is our current transportation system supporting extracurricular activities? Excuse me. Uh, we are um, still, again, having some struggles with our choice schools and getting them to their home schools for their practices, as well as middle school. And we reference specifically tennis teams. <clears throat> and I remember that um, where our tennis teams, depending on their location, or if they don't have a tennis court, they had to either walk to the nearest high school or to the nearest community court. So those were some of the examples of the uh, constraints that we did have been experiencing this year. <coughs> and then finally, what percentage of elementary students who have siblings enrolled in APS middle or high school? So this was data that was pulled. There is a disclaimer that again, this is for discussion. So it was it was pulled to try to give us kind of an idea, understanding of how those numbers are panning out and dual enrollees are de are excluded from this analysis here but you can kind of see uh, for students who have one or more middle school or high school siblings and they sort it out by pre-k k to five um, and pre-k to five Okay, so at this point, do we have any additional comments for the group? Catch my breath. Jillian? Jillian, you're muted if you're speaking. Yeah, I'm sorry, that was old. Oh. Okay, Susanna. <clears throat> Hi, I was just wondering if as, as members of this committee, is there anything in particular that you want us to share or communicate to our schools? Um, or anyway, I'm, and, and if so, like feel free to send us stuff. I'm happy to pass stuff along. So any of the documentation I, I send you, feel free to share. You could, you can share this link. I know that's going to produce a lot of data, but that gives uh, our, our community opportunity to to give their feedback with regards to how they would like to see the elementaries grouped. the The survey is not going to have that question per se. That's that's information that's coming out of our conversation. Um, and again, anything I send, if you feel that it would be helpful for our community to have, we will post this information on Engage as well. I think pretty much so it's just understanding that in, in um, Jillian captured it very well that you know instruction is definitely our priority in ensuring that our students have their needs met instructionally, but also knowing and just coming from that middle school model, the social emotional is key and that's all across all levels. It's just uh, um, it's something near and dear to me uh, with regards to middle schoolers and ensuring that they have those opportunities to learn and grow and really, really find out who they are as we prepare them for their high school. Uh, years. So any uh, support that you can have in helping them understand the scenarios would be helpful. Um, I guess just to continue that conversation so that again we can come back and, and capture data and information that will offer us the opportunity to provide the school board the most informed uh, conversation that we've had here. Again, that, that could be here's here's the scenarios that we came up with. Uh, we love that we systematized the times. However, there are still those constraints uh, that we're facing and there may be, uh, I would hope, some a way for them to support our conversation with that as well so that we can try to come up again with the most comprehensive opportunity for our entire community. It's kind of difficult when we look 
global in everyone because we have Swanson in our mind or Key or or Wakefield. So um, that would just be helpful for me. And we had talked about that in our first uh, setting is that you are going to be my um, my touch point to your community. So any feedback that you can get and you want to send to me, fine. If they want to put it in engaged, that's great as well. I did uh, get something uh, after we had generated this, uh, this uh, presentation today regarding the, um, I'm sorry guys, I've been here since seven, regarding the hub stops and ensuring that we, especially for our elementary students, ensuring the safety and the, the crossing across um, uh, the busier thoroughfare. So that will be captured in our engage as well. So I appreciate it uh, in, in you asking and again, any support that you can provide us with regards to the global conversation that would be so helpful. Kia? Hi. Hi. I just want to the comment that if we're going to follow the logic that choice schools should start later because of the cross county travel, I would say that scenario three just be stricken because uh, Montessori with the hub stops and if we are in the third tier of starting at 920 and you know with the planning being that we could be on a bus for up to 60 minutes mm -hmm. that's having elementary school kids get home close to five i don't think is acceptable okay i capture that in additional comments thank you any other comments and I'll ask, uh, although controversial, don't shoot the messenger. Is there any talk of um, paying for buses or transportation on a sliding scale? Not at this time, no. Heather? Hi, yes. I just had a question about potentially switching the high school to the, to the end. Um, in terms of having sports just be in the beginning, in the morning, um, instead of like late buses, it would be early buses. And um, it would, the, the, the thinking on it is it gives most kids maximum time for sleeping in. It reduces the issue of the lateness of after school. Um, and it only means that those kids sort of during their season or during their time when they're doing the sports, they would then be getting up a little earlier. Um, I know that there are many other opinions about that. I just thought that that hasn't, I mean, it was sort of addressed in like period one, but period zero, but I was just thinking in terms of it, it's sort of a choice and it's a, a, a restricted time where you would be potentially doing that. So it might be better for, um, for the students. I know there's like cross county um, meets and stuff like that, like within the county meets, if everyone was starting early, like potentially that could happen in the morning, question mark, um, <laughs> because I'm not sure how long all of the meets take. Um, but that was just something that I thought we could knock around and probably beat down, but just a thought. So let me just uh, make sure I'm capturing. You're speaking on the morning sports within APS, not outside of APS, so not like with Fairfax competitors and uh, correct. Principal. Because oh. I don't, I don't know how often, as a county, we do go outside of the county, um, so that, so I don't know how much of an impact that would be. Okay, we got that here, and um, I think, and. Um, I mean, if we're talking about high school moving, um, it, our our district has W and L in it, and Wakefield, and then the rest are all um, Fairfax County schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, the basketball games start at 4:30 for okay. freshmen, um, so they would have to leave school early uh, to go to that. And I don't know other sports, but um, you know, you mentioned at the beginning that these high schools in the middle is. Okay. All right, thank you.
So team, I thank you so much again for your time. Uh, this is what I have for this evening. I don't know, Mike, did you have any uh, closing remarks or Andrew? No, no, I don't. Thank you, everybody. Okay. No, thank you as well. Okay. So uh, look forward to the, the survey coming out. Again, the survey will have five uh, scenarios and the, the survey is tiered. So if you only have a middle school uh, school student, it will tier you. You'll make your selection of your school and it's going to take you to questions that are specific for middle school. If you have elementary, high and middle, you'll get an opportunity to answer across all those tiers. Uh, it also has a staff component. So we will be gauging uh, feedback from staff and there was a, a comment again concerned about the elementary start time and, and with regards to our staff and them having to get in a half an hour or so before the students and, and also they may have uh, family obligations on their own. There's also a student component. So we'll be uh, supporting the students and getting the survey attached to their Canvas pages. So students will have an opportunity to answer in that manner, or of course they can access it through the uh, links that will be sent uh, via the School Talk messaging centrally. So looking forward to that feedback. So our, our survey is opening today. It will stay open until next Friday, March 25th. After that, We'll be crunching a lot of numbers the following week because our goal is to provide our groups information by April 6th as far as the data that is flushing out of the um, surveys and giving us an idea of where our community is standing. Remember that I've been asked to prepare and we'll be working with Mike and, and Micah in a presentation for, toward the school board for information on April 28th. Um, because you are stakeholders, however, I'll be sending out some drafts to get some feedback before. I, 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 I'm collaborative and I, I really do rely on feedback and other ideas. So we have a lot of great minds on this call as well as the call on Friday. So definitely we'll be looking forward to your feedback as we prepare that information for the school board. And then the school board will determine based on the information that's shared, uh, what action it will take with regards to the bell times and if we will be making any adjustments for the 22-23 school year. So again, I do appreciate your time. And I'm going to see how this week flows with regards to feedback and the engage piece. And I will let you know uh, later on this week if we do need a another meeting next uh, Monday. I added that in there just in case. We may need it, we may not, uh, but I will gauge also your feedback and if you feel like we need to come together and definitely share comments and concerns coming from your community stakeholders, we can definitely uh, plan on it. So I will let you know that. Thank you so much and I appreciate all the thanks in the chat. This has been some awesome work and I appreciate you all taking the journey with me. That's <laughs> one of my first tasks in this role. So thank you all. And I think I gave you back five minutes. So <laughs> enjoy that time. And I, I look forward to working with you all. Take care now. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.